Hi, I'm Steve Siegel and I'm chairman of Global Brokerage at C.B. Richard Ellis. And uh, I've been in the business, uh, I used to come in with Fred Flintstone to work in the morning for a very long time. And it's a business I love dearly. Uh, where did I grow up? I guess that assumes I grew up. Um, where I was born was the Bronx here in New York City. And I was, uh, I guess I lived there for 17 years or until I was 17. I didn't have any predisposition to real estate. I graduated high school when I was very young, uh, 15, and I had to work. I've been working in some capacity, delivering leaflets, working in a, what you would call now a, a soda fountain or, or a, a luncheonette. And then when I graduated high school, in order to pay for uh, tuition at City College here in New York, I had to work. So I got a job, fortunately, at a real, residential real estate company in their mailroom. 8.30 to 1.30, so I could go to school from 3 to 7. Um, and I spent uh, probably two years there. And when I was 17, I was able to get a job at a company called Cushman & Wakefield. I had to work full time, so I switched to night school. Um, so that was my entry into real estate, and I just stayed. I got there at 17, and at 37 I was named chairman president and CEO of the company. It was at that time the largest commercial real estate company in the world. Ed Gordon and I would be passing ships, competitors in New York, uh, and we would meet at black tie dinners, fundraisers, etc. and we became friends. Um, we had to be clandestine friends because we were competitors. <clears throat> so we used to meet. There was an old delicatessen on 2nd Avenue and 10th Street. We, we would make a lunch date and that's where we'd go so nobody would see us. He would buy a hot dog, cut it in half, we'd share that, <laughs> we would share a sandwich, and he would tell the waiter every single time, or waitress, we're going to sit here a long time, but I'm a very big tipper. <laughs> and we, we would talk market, we would talk the uh, quality of the service provided by real estate brokers in those days. We'd talk about his business and how to work on elevating it to, I guess, the credibility and the professionalism that Christian Wayfield had. I left Chris Wakefield to try development, and we had some bad times, and he kept hammering at me. Once a month, he would call up. When are you going to come back and do what you do best? When are you going to give up this development? What's your favorite color? I'd tell him. He'd say, I'd say, why? He'd say, I want to paint your office. Uh, he was a relentless salesman. He was brilliant in every way, and uh, eventually I did join him, and we had, uh, until he passed away, 10 great years together. My current responsibility has really morphed into I'm a transaction person basically I guess a broker again which is great for me at this stage of my life because the the tediousness of uh, full-time management and the um, the pressure to create quarterly results and annual results and investor relations calls and stuff like that I went through for a lot of years both with Cushman Wayfield and when Signy bought us, Signy was public, so it was another public company entity with earnings calls and so on. My elephant, uh, I was a bachelor living in a town across the river, uh, had a very nice apartment, and the only thing in it at the time, first piece of furniture was a big wall unit, rose, a rosewood wall unit. And this woman who worked for me in the New Jersey office brought me a uh, uh, elephant made out of uh, oyster shells. It's, it's still in my cabinet somewhere. Um, and she put it on the shelf. <clears throat> so anyone who then came over, or if I had a, a, you know, a party in my apartment, ah, I know what to get him. I get him elephants. And I would get a few more elephants. And then I started to travel when I became CEO of Cushman and Wakefield, traveling extensively worldwide. And between my buying it, if I saw an interesting elephant, people buying them if they were traveling, and clients who actually brought them to me. Everything from an ottoman to a bottle opener to a, a pipe that you can smoke from, and they say you're supposed to have trunk up for good luck. Um, I have a lot with trunks down, but I have so many with trunks up, they offset the bad luck, I assume. There was always an element of giving back in my family in a different scale. Um, 
And I guess I was exposed to other people who felt that way as I grew up. And uh, I've had some amazing, I guess, gratifying moments in giving back. Because I, I get involved in these charities, I just don't give money, I give time, which is more valuable in a lot of instances. My main focus now is uh, leukemia research. My wife has leukemia. She's battling it for two and a half years. It's sort of the toughest type of leukemia, and we've started a fund. Uh, we've also started a, um, a group of, uh, of people gathering samples because how to test uh, for bone marrow ma matches or stem cell matches, which is one of the ways to hopefully um, abate this illness, if not cure it. Um, and then I guess the most important advice is be yourself. I mean, it's easy for me because I love people. So it's easy for me to relate to people. And uh, when I ran companies as the CEO, I would tell them how it is. It wouldn't be circuitous. I wouldn't have anyone else do, whether it was good news or bad news, do it for me. Um, so I think just do the right thing and just be open and candid. Mm -hmm.